Well, good morning, church. We're glad that you're here with us and uh, that you're joining us online. Uh, relax, uh, sing along with us, and prepare your heart for God's Word today and what He wants to teach us. song, especially during this time that we're having to worship at home in kind of a different circumstance, and it's got its own challenges of distractions at home, uh, and this song is just really about coming back to the presence of God with no distractions, so I just pray that you'd spend this next song really connecting with God, letting go of any distractions around you. God, I pray that you would just help us to focus on you, God. Help us to just spend this time in your presence, blocking out everything else, God. Help us to not go through the motions, but really to worship you. Jesus, you don't owe me 
just want you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song. So take me back to where we started. I open up my At Stone Point, at Stone Point, um, we are always trying to uh, continue to connect with our body during the week, from from Kids Live to um, to Stone Point Students Live to Regeneration, Family Game Night, Prayer Gatherings. Uh, we have a lot going on. So 
to keep up to date with what we have going on, um, check our Facebook page, and you can also check uh, your Stone Point News uh, for details of what's happening. If, um, if you're not signed up for Stone Point News, you can go to stonepointchurch.com forward slash stonepointnews and sign up there to find out and keep up to date with what we're doing. Um, if you would also take a little time this morning, head over to our website. If you're a first time guest with us, and uh, fill out a communication card and just give us a little information about yourself so that we can uh, get in touch with you and uh, find out how we can be praying for you. And then if you are a part of the body, uh, fill out a communication card as well to uh, let us know how we can pray for you, but then praise the Lord for what he's doing through your family during this uncertain time. And uh, also challenging times, they're a great opportunity for the church to shine. Uh, we're able to do many many things for many different people. Uh, we're continuing to give financially to families. We're continuing to provide food. And in order for us to continue to do that, your giving is needed now as much as, much as it has ever been. So uh, if you would like to continue giving of what the Lord has blessed you with financially, you can set up a reoccurring gift at stonepointchurch.com forward slash give, or you can mail your giving to Stone Point Church, P.O. Box 746, Wills Point, Texas, 75169. We love you, church. We miss seeing you in person. But until then, we're going to continue to worship and connect together in the best way possible, and that is through these means. So thanks for joining us, and we look forward to what the Lord has to teach us this morning. Life is fragile. It's a fact we're learning in real time, every day. What we once called normal has seemingly disappeared. There's uncertainty in the air, restlessness in our hearts. Things we once took for granted are becoming difficult to find. Our usual day-to-day -day has evolved into this odd chaos. Peace is becoming obsolete. Many have lost jobs, security, and those they love. The pain is undeniable. But what if our fragility caused us to lean harder into God? What if, in our weakness, we chose to rely more on His strength? Would our outlook change? Would the peace that passes understanding begin to drown out the noise of this moment? Would we walk in a quiet confidence, knowing our God is mighty to save? We're not promised tomorrow but we are given a simple truth to stand on. Our God goes before us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Yes, life is fragile, but in our weakness, He is strong. Well, church, uh, over the last couple of months, our world has been shaken in many ways. Matter of fact, as I uh, reflect on a handful of things over just the last couple of days, I mean, we have so many things that we were counting on happening this spring that haven't happened, have been postponed, and some things that will never happen. Matter of fact, as we reflect on the last couple of months, we notice how many things have changed. From the postponing of Major League Baseball and rooting for our Texas Rangers uh, to graduation ceremonies that are still pending and so many things still up in the air uh, to uh, reflecting on other things that have happened around us, not being able to, to get out uh, and enjoy some of the things that we have in the past wiping down things after you've gone to the grocery store to make sure that you've cleared yourself of germs. Like there's so many things that have changed. It's almost crazy to figure out what it looks like when we move forward together. And in many ways, there's people that are joining us in this moment that you're, you're frustrated. You're uh, still a little bit uh, anxious, a little bit fearful. And as you reflect on all the changes that we have had take place in our life, you, 
you wonder how we are going to move forward. And, and here's what I want to encourage you today as we kind of wrap up um, this idea of what happens when things change. Today, I just want to remind you that in the midst of all the things that are changing, protocols at work, uh, schedules, being homeschool parents, trying to manage your work uh, situation from at home, now trying to navigate what it looks like to begin to get out of of your home and begin figuring out what 25% of the capacity of everything looks like. All these changes happening every day. What, what would it look like if we reminded ourselves of a handful of things that have never changed? That in all of the things around us that seem a little bit shaking uh, and a little bit shakable, what about the things that are unshaking, that are totally predictable and things that we can rely on? And I think that's our hope today is that we would just remind ourselves of a, fa a handful of things that have never changed. And so let's just start with this one. God hasn't changed. In all the things that we've been dealing with, our immovable, incredible, powerful, holy, and righteous God has never moved. He's never changed. He's always remained the same. And we have so many things to be thankful for as it relates to who he is. Matter of fact, when we think about who God is and the fact that he never changes, I think about Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. And it just reminds us who he is. In Malachi chapter 3, uh, he says these words, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. And so when we think about who he is, uh, we know that our God never changes. What an incredible hope that in everything else around us being movable, we have a God who is immovable. Matter of fact, we also think about the idea of Psalm 90, verse 2. Uh, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. He is holy and supreme, and he's righteous, and he has always been. He, he always will be. Psalm 102 kind of uh, helps us see that in verses 25 through 27. And I want to give those to you now. Of old, you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years have no end. I mean, think about that real quickly. In everything that is changing in this season, we have a God who is of old, that he has always been and always will be, that before even the foundation of the, the earth was set, you had a God who is all-knowing, all-powerful, and ever-present. And he has not changed in the least. And then it said that even after uh, the earth gives way, that it wears out like a garment, that as God changes everything uh, from this old life that passes away to a, a new one to come, that he will still remain. What an incredible hope that we can fix our eyes on a God who never moves, who desires to know us and also be known by us. I can't help but think about Revelation 1.8 that just talks about that God is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And listen, there is no disease. There is nothing that's going to change who God is. And we can just take hope and comfort in that. Uh, the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 13 uh, just reminded us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And so we know that God's person is never changing and he is immovable. And so because God hasn't changed, friends, it means that we can set our eyes on him as a fixture that never moves, that is easily found. And friends, I'll tell you that there are so many things that are happening around us that confuse us, that give us fear or anxiousness or anxiety because we can't control any of it. And I don't know about you, but that's frustrating to an American when we can't control the things around us we just want out. We're frustrated, we're fearful, we're confused, but here's the deal. Fix your eyes on the immovable God who loves you. He has always been, always will be. In him is found wisdom and truth and hope. 
And the reason why is because God is not only immovable, but his word stands forever. Like we don't just serve a God who's immovable, but we serve a God who his words will come to pass. And we can take great hope and comfort in that. And so as we think about who he is, we also have to think about what rings true in the past and also in the present, the very things that he has addressed through his word. And I can't help but think about Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, which just simply says, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. When we think about God's faithfulness and his trustworthiness, we have to think about his word. And his word is as true now as it ever has been. And I know that there's a lot of us that we wonder, maybe this is the end. Maybe we're nearing the time that Jesus comes back. Maybe he's drawing near. And here's what I would tell you. Maybe, and maybe he's just around the corner. But what we do know is that his word has always prepared us as a believer to live as if he is coming. And so just as the God of heaven and earth has not changed, neither has his word. So what do we know? We know that we should live with an expectant heart. Psalm 33, 11 says that the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generation. We know that his word is continuing to be something that we think of and that we meditate on. And I would just tell you this, friends. I hope that in the last six to eight weeks, you've had ample time to read and study his word. And friends, if you haven't, then I encourage you to make the most of your opportunity, redeem the time, and begin using some of the resources that we provided. Maybe you're not even aware, but we've launched a couple of studies over the last couple of months, and one of them is online ready for you now, that you can go and discover God's word, that you can read it for yourself, that you can apply it to your life. And it's found at stonepointchurch.com forward slash to Peter. Um, And we're just walking through 2 Peter. Why? Because we want to remind ourselves of a God whose word is constant, who never changes. Matter of fact, in the Old Testament, uh, in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it says this, God is not man that he should lie, or the son of man that he should change his mind. He has said, and and will he not do it? Or as he's spoken, uh, will he not fulfill it? So the idea of that is this, is that God is not like us. Friends, in this season, not only are we shaked, Uh, shakable and not only are we easily moved sometimes passing from fro you know from distance to distance and and tossed to and fro easily we have a God who is not easily moved And, and as we think about his word we have a God who he keeps his word friends I don't know about you but I can oftentimes overpromise and underdeliver. I can often say, hey, I'm going to do this. And then I find myself getting busy. I find myself getting distracted. And I find myself not keeping my word, which is a challenge, right? As a man of integrity, I want to keep my words. I want to let my yes be yes and my no be no. And there's a lot of us in this moment that we struggle with that. We overpromise and we underdeliver. We oftentimes don't keep our word, but that's not the God we serve. His word is constant, it's true, it stands forever. If he said it, it will come to pass. If he has put it in his word for us to read, to examine, and apply, it will come to fruition. Why? Because his word is fixed. It, just as it's fixed in the heavens, Psalm 1, 19, uh, 1 Peter 1, tells us that his word is imperishable, that it does not move, that it's a living word that remains forever. And we just need to take hope in that, that God is immovable and that his word stands true. Thirdly, we need to think that God's purposes are immovable. What is God trying to do in this season? What is it that he desires? And here's what I've seen that is positive. I've seen family values increase in the last couple of months. I've seen a culture that struggles to spend too much money. I've seen them begin saving money. I have seen families uh, grow stronger and they're, they're being strengthened this time. I've seen priorities rearranged. I have seen people who have neglected God's word. I've seen them draw near to God's word. See, God is doing something and his purposes are sure. 
They're immovable. Just as God is immovable and he never changes, just as his word is fixed, his plans are fixed as well. He's not surprised. The coronavirus hasn't snuck up on him. It's not a disease that he can't see. He is totally aware of it. And we can give thanks because he is aware in this moment. We can thank him because of who he is, that his love never changes. I think about 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Church, he still loves people. He still desires to see people repent in this time, to come to know him, to see him as supreme, high and lifted up in their life. That's what the Lord is doing. Uh, it reminds me also of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9, which just says this, God therefore, or know therefore that the Lord your God is God, that the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to thousand generations. See, the Lord still is on his throne and he is still pursuing people. And friends, as inconvenienced as many of us have been over the last couple of months, do you know how many thousands of people who have had their eternities changed in the midst of crisis? Do you know how many people have seen the church step up in multiple ways, not only in this community, but also in communities around the world where the light of the world has been shown and manifested through God's people? That every trial, every hardship, every single struggle has been pointing to a God whose purposes are unchanging. And the reason that they're unchanging is because God is sure, he's fixed, his word is fixed, and his purposes are as well. 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, Paul writes to his friend and his, and his cohort, Timothy, and he just reminds him of this. He goes, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. What's incredible, too, is this, is that even when I lack faith or when I don't keep my eyes on the prize, when I don't do all the Lord wants for me, that doesn't change anything because the Lord is true. And while he desires for me to see what he's doing and to join him in that movement, um, he, 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 it doesn't stop his plan. His plans are not thwarted by an enemy, the adversary Satan, nor are they thwarted by me not getting on board with him. And so there's a lot of us who we're not looking to see what God's doing in this season. We're looking at our own selfishness. And when that happens, that doesn't change who God is and it doesn't change what he wants to accomplish. But friends, can I just tell you real quickly, lean in with me. The best place to be is with an immovable God. The best place to, to lean in with is to a God who loves you, desires a purpose and a plan for you. And the best place that you can live is in the center of his will and desire for you. And listen, if we are, are waging war against our flesh, I praise God for that. But I pray that we would lean in, that we would trust him, that we would walk in his spirit and that we would join his team, and that we would fulfill the purposes and the plans in a time of darkness and despair and hopelessness. I pray that we would be light and peace and joy, and I pray that we would be the picture of the gospel that the world desperately needs. Why? Because God is still at work. And here's the deal too. Maybe you're wondering, well, when will this all be over? Like, when can I get out of my house? When can I go back to work? When can we gather again as a church body? And here's what I would just say, I don't know. But here's what I do know is that our future is still secure. Our future hope hasn't changed because here's the, th the thing, friends, our future hope isn't our job. Our future hope is not us getting out of the house sometime soon. Our future hope is not us gathering again as believers. Our future hope is fixed in the heavens and our future hope is heavenly. It is us setting our eyes on things above. It is knowing that there is a redeemer and a king who loves us, who's working in our lives, who wants to use every obstacle as an opportunity to grow us in our faith, to draw us near to a holy God. And he's doing that so that one day, after we have been refined that he will call us home and he will complete the work that he began in us. For many of us, he began that work recently and for others of us, he began that work long ago. But here's what I do know. Even this time, this trial, this season of our life can mold us and shape us into the people 
with godly character that he desires. And I pray that would come to pass in our own life. I can't help but think about the words of 1 Peter uh, that we were reading together just uh, about a month ago. In 1 Peter um, chapter 1, verses 3 through 7, uh, this is what Peter says. He says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So he began that work in us. He called us into his family. Verse 4, it says that he called us to an, 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 to an inheritance that is imperishable, that's undefiled, that's unfading, that it's kept in heaven for you. Friends, this is a verse that you should highlight. It's a verse that you should seek to memorize. And the reason why is, is because this is the promise of our eternal hope, that our future is secure. Why? Because if God began a work in us, he called us to be a part of his family. He made us a son or daughter. It means that we have a heavenly home, that it's fixed, that it's set for us, and that it will not move. Matter of fact, verse 5 says, it's by him, by God's power, that we are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. And in this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor and the revelation of Jesus Christ." Friends, if you're struggling in this season to see what God is doing, I pray that you would go to 1 Peter chapter 1 and that you would read that chapter. That you would reflect on the words of verses 3 through 7. Why? Because the trials that we're in right now are helping shape us in our eternal presence and ultimately for the glory of God in our lives. And so what God is doing now is not wasted it is being used so that we see his purposes and plans. Matter of fact, Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, just says this, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Uh, the words of Jesus there, Jesus going, hey, listen, everything else is going to come to an end. Uh, the things that you think are important are going to come to an end, but the things that will not come to an end are the, the things that you should be sure of, and that is that God is not moved. Uh, you, you shouldn't be confused that his words will come to pass, that they will be strong, steady, and they will be true. And you shouldn't worry because his purposes are immovable. And we have a God who has fixed all of this way before the foundation of the, the earth. And after all of it crumbles and all of it fades away, guess what? God will still be there. And friends, here's what I would encourage you to do, is that you would think about things that will last forever. I don't know about you, but I oftentimes am thinking about a Walmart run. I'm thinking about the things that I need in my pantry to get me through this next week. And I find myself in this season becoming frustrated, but I also find myself fixing my eyes on temporal things. And I don't know about you. What would it look like if we finally came to the place and we realized that what we have here is going to fade away? That the money that we're trying to acquire, the job status that we're trying to have, the things we're holding on to that the Lord has taken and he has stripped us bare of in a lot of ways in the last couple of months. What if we saw those as a reminder that we should fix ourselves on something that will last forever? I love Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. And it just says this, for here we have no lasting city but we seek the city that is to come. Friends, you and I need to realize that the things that we oftentimes are investing in will not last. That there is not a city on earth that is, that is grand and that is proud that will stand forever. Any of the, the cities that we boast about here in the States, they're going to come to an end. Every single one of them is going to one day fall. One day they're all going to become perishable. But we fix our eyes on things that are imperishable, that will not spoil, that will not fade away. And that is the hope of the believer. Listen, I don't want to minimize the fact that many of us are hurting, that many of us feel lonely, that many of us are frustrated, that many of us are confused. I don't want to minimize that, but what I want to do is remind you that we have a God who is worth clinging to, that he can be found right now, that you can go to him, 
that you can acknowledge your, your depravity or ways that you've missed the mark, that you can acknowledge that before him, that he is quick to forgive, that he is quick to abound himself in grace and love and mercy towards us. And he wants to remind us of his fixed word, of his, of his plans and his purposes in our life. And more than that, he wants us to set our eyes on things above. Friends, I pray we'll do that. What a great Sunday morning. Looks like it's shaping up to be a beautiful day outside. One in which as we may do some things this afternoon, whether it be in our yard or putting some flowers in or possibly it is a Walmart pickup, I pray you would do it all for the glory of God because he loves you and he cares for you. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning. Father, I thank you for my friends that have joined us in this time. Father, we, we want to reflect on the character and the goodness of our great God. Father, while everything else around us seems to be moving and, and seems to be shakable, Lord, we know that you are unshakable, that you are immovable. Father, we thank you for that promise. Lord, we thank you that while everything on the earth seems to be changing, that we worship a God who never changes, that just as you were before the beginning of time, so you will be at the end of time. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. Lord, your words will come to pass. We thank you for your faithful words. Lord, we thank you for the purposes in our life that you use trials and suffering and hardship for your glory and our good. Father, I pray that if you have to strip me totally bare to get my attention, I pray you'll do that. Father, I pray you would do that for all of us. God, that if we have to have more taken away for our priorities to be right, I pray, God, that you would do it. Most of all, I pray that in all of it, just as Job suffered, just as Peter was sifted, I pray that as we struggle in this life, that we would keep our eyes on the prize, that we would run our race with perseverance, knowing that there is an unfading crown of glory at the end. Lord, help us, help us, help us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
that's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down and surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Worship.